John chapter 8, verse 31. Then say Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Praise God. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Did you hear that? He said, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, today I want to go a bit more uh, deliberately into the mind of truth. The mind of truth. Okay? The mind of truth. Not just truth, but the mind of truth. What is behind this person, truth? Praise God. For you know scripture tells us, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father except what? Through me. But what is this understanding? What is this truth that makes men free? Praise God. If we all know by scripture that it's the truth we know that sets us free. If we know the truth, the truth sets us free. What is this truth to know to set us free? Somebody shout hallelujah. What is this truth to know to set us free? The Bible speaks of experiences in history, and I know some of you know of such experiences, where it's possible for, in first, Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 7, it has a scripture that says that, there are people who are ever learning, praise God, are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever learning, but they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever learning, ever learning, ever learning, ever learning, right? They attend service every Thursday, they attend service every Sunday, they attend conferences, they listen in on live stream, they all just stream, they attend every everything that you have there. You recommend books, they read, they sit in their rooms, they listen to CDs and then they, they listen to every sermon that you've given them on anything and that's a wonderful thing. But they never come, they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And you can be around people for so long, they will create a facade, they'll create a light, they'll create certain actions and certain things that define truth of sort and for a, for, for a while you might be deceived when you see them because they look like they know the truth. But over a while when you start to see their lives, when you start to see their everything they do the results of truth are not there remember the Bible says in 1st Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men what saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth praise God that means you can learn and learn and learn and never come to the knowledge of the truth because truth has its results. It has its... There is progress in the life of a man who has understood truth. And some people think, oh, but you know, I've had these things but nothing is changing. I think I need to do this. I think I need to do that. And then they get all sorts of understanding of what they think they need to do. Maybe I need to change where I am. Where maybe I need to change church. Maybe I need to change service. Maybe I need to connect here. Maybe I need to go on the mountain. Maybe I need to go for some prayer. This. Maybe I need to go for a deliverance. Maybe I need to go. No. You are learning but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. When you know the truth, the truth will make you free. So don't think that when you ever learn and have not come to the knowledge of the truth, somehow there is going to be a shortcut that is going to take you there. Until you know the truth, you will never be free. I don't know how certain people don't get it. The Bible says in 3 John chapter 1 verse 3, he says, For I rejoice greatly. This is him rejoicing. He says, I rejoice greatly 
I rejoice. Chapter 1 verse 3. He says, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth. He says, That is in thee as thou walkest in the truth. He said, I rejoice greatly when I had the brethren testifying of the truth that is in you, even as thou walkest in truth. You know, the result of the truth being in man is that man starts to walk in truth. Now, when you read the literal word there, the Greek word there for walking in truth, it means that there is progress and results in your life of truth, in your understanding of truth. You are from one level to another level. Something increases on your life more than your weight. Hallelujah. Something increases on your life more than your age. Something increases on your life more than your hair on the head. Something increases on your life. It increases on your life. It just something adds on you. That's why he's rejoicing. He says, they came to know the truth even as thou walkest in the truth. You know, the, tr the, the reality of truth being in them was evidence as how they walked in truth. That means you can only walk as is in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can only walk as is in you. You can only function as is in you. You can only progress as is in you. You can only have results, positive results as is in you. You can only see miracles, signs and wonders as is in you. Whatever is in you is what comes out of you. You can only walk as is in you. Right? That's why I told you the word walking there means to progress. To progress evidently. To progress evidently. So that when somebody sees you, they can see there is evidence. You remember when the scripture says, give yourself holy to these things? That your profiting will appear upon all. That everybody who watches you or sees you says, hmm, there is something happening on this woman. And this evidence that she has understood truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, it is possible to ever learn and you see every time we say that many Christians think of the other person huh. but this person in the ministry eh? this person mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -uh. turn the lights on you praise God turn the camera on what? on you are you coming? have you come to the knowledge of the truth? praise God have you come to the knowledge of the truth? have you come to the knowledge of the truth? Do you hear God? If you remember the time, one time I was sharing about Pontius Pilate and Jesus, a conversation between Pontius Pilate and Jesus in uh, John chapter 18, verses 36, where Jesus answered him and says, My kingdom is not of this world. If the kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from hence. And Pilate, therefore, the Bible says, said unto him, Are thou king? And then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am king. He says, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. I have a sermon there. That I should bear witness in unto the word, the truth. And he says, and everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth, he says, hears me. When somebody says, you know, I'm struggling to hear the voice of God. How much truth is in you? Or are you of the truth? Are you of the truth? Because there's a certain set preconceived understanding by prevenient grace that comes to every man who seeks to hear the voice of God. And this is to the end that a certain truth must be in your spirit. When certain truths are set in your spirit, the voice of God becomes clearer. Remember the word of God is a double-edged sword. It cuts asunder, separates the bone and marrow, exposes our hearts and thoughts what they really are. The Bible says that nothing is hid before him, for all things are naked and defenseless before him with whom we have to do. There is nothing hid from the word. There is nothing defenseless from the word. You know what it means not to be defenseless? It means there is nothing that cannot subject or listen to the word. When the Bible says for all things are defenseless to him, it means there is nothing that cannot bow to the word of God. There is no creator, there is no system, there is no substance, there is no body, there is no influence, there is no force, there is no order, there is no circumstance, there is no situation 
There is nothing that cannot bow to the word of God. It's not possible. Because it's by this word that everything you see was framed. Somebody shout hallelujah. But he says, when you, to this end came I into the world, and for this cause was I what? That I should be a witness of the truth. And he says, and everyone which is of the truth, the Bible says, they hear me. They hear me. They hear me. They hear me. One time, in the book of Acts, if you remember very well, Paul stands before Festus. You remember Festus? And then they've taken him, right, to answer charges because there's false accusations everywhere, right? And then 26, Acts 26, verses 24, gives us a middle account when Paul is speaking to Festus. You can go back and study it very keenly. And the Bible says, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. And he said, much learning doth make thee mad. This is Festus saying so. Agrippa is in the room as well, the king. He's listening. He's listening. A man speaks for many hours. And somebody says, you know what? You're beside yourself. You are mad. There's something missing in you. He is speaking pure, absolute truth. A hundred percent truth. But there's a man listening to that truth and he's saying, you are mad. You are beside yourself. Evidently, the things you're speaking show that you're learning much, but your learning is taking you to madness. You cannot argue that the man is releasing mysteries. You cannot argue that the man is speaking truth. You cannot argue that the man is speaking realities. But he cannot connect to the realities the man is saying. And as he's speaking, Agrippa is seated there. Festus is here. He says, you are besides yourself. Festus is telling him, you're losing your mind. You're getting mad. You've overstudied. Now things are starting to jangle in your head. Praise God. Now remember, he has been speaking all a while. Men are hearing. And we continue. Um, and then he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king, listen, knoweth these things. He knoweth of these things, before whom I also speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for that this thing was not done in a corner. And King Agrippa, so he turns to King Agrippa and he says, King Agrippa, believe the thou the prophet, I know that you believe them. And then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Do you know why Agrippa says you almost persuaded me to be a Christian? Because much as Festus was not getting it, Agrippa was clicking everything. Agrippa was understanding everything. These are two men in the same room. And there's one man speaking. And the other guy is saying, this guy is mad. This guy has much, much learning in himself and is beside himself. And in the same room, there's a guy following. He's getting everything. Paul says, with a gripper, I speak freely before him. Why? Because my conscience bears witness with the Holy Spirit. That I'm ministering truth in him. I'm manifesting truth to him. He says, by manifesting truth, we commend ourselves to the consciences of men. When Paul is standing before Agrippa, he knows that this guy understands what he's saying. Agrippa might not speak much. Agrippa might have a shyness because he's king and there are things that he cannot say before him. But in his spirit, he's following. He, he, the, the, the guy knows. You know, when you're talking truth, when you're between two people, there's a person who can learn and you know this person is learning. But they're not able to take this. But sometimes you can sit before certain people and as you're speaking, you feel they're clicking you. They're un understanding you that's the situation Paul was in Agrippa is understanding the man and he says you almost persuaded me to be a Christian he turns and says I see there is nothing in this guy this guy has done nothing in fact if he had not appealed to Caesar I would have released him why? because it is in the mind of Agrippa he understands everyone that is of the truth hears my voice 
Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, for many years I used to get this shock, and this was a shock. The shock for me was always that someone can sit under a word and be taught for many years. And then after those many years, they do something so off. And they're like, but I thought, no, you thought. You thought, but it is not so. A man can learn and learn and learn and never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, don't just end at the place of salvation, I'm glad I'm born again, but do you really know the truth? Do you really know the truth? Sometimes we tell people, oh, grace message, grace message, and you know, but, oh yeah, I understand the grace, grace means that righteousness is imputed, no, 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 listen, you can speak, we can all speak, we can all, you know, we can all, you know, you can even share of the very thing that is not working in your life. There are many poor pastors in this world who are sharing about financial freedom. Praise God. There are many people with broken things, but they're preaching of the same things. And sometimes it's not that the man is wrong, but it's only that the spirit has mandated him to share the things that have to be shared because he has to serve another soul. But at the end of the day, there comes a time where we examine ourselves and get into there to say, what is the truth? Do I really know the truth? Because when we talk about the truth shall set you free or make you free, if you want to know that certain people have not understood this, some people think that when the Bible says you shall know the truth and she shall make you free, they think it shall give you a job. It shall deliver you from a curse. It shall deliver you from that sickness. It shall deliver you from that, you know, problem. It will bring back your husband. It will take your kid off this. And much as that is true, it is only true to a smaller extent. The bigger, most underlying understanding of the freedom of truth is the final understanding, the total understanding of everything you are in God and everything He is in you. Are you following what I'm saying? It's more than just getting a job and getting a house. These things the heathens have also. Men who don't know God have also. But what is the knowledge of the truth? The knowledge of the truth is to know the person of Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. You understand? Because he is truth. To understand how he thinks, how he moves, how he functions, how he you know, ciphers with, 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 the, with the issues of life, how he, he draws the distinctions on your life, how he deals with men, how he deals with everything, how he responds, the spirit of Christ, how the spirit of Christ functions, who he is as a person. That is the knowledge of truth. It comes with a certain freedom. And this freedom is not primarily to get you that little small thing that you know. No, that's part. That's a very small fraction of truth. The deeper fraction of truth is to have freedom in God to access the hidden things of Him. 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 If the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? It, it goes around everything we do not know, right? But when we understand how free, you realize freedom is more than driving a good car. Freedom is more than having a million dollars on your account. Freedom is more than having billions of shillings or millions of dollars and having a very nice house and clothes and shoes and very nice families and children and everything. You can still have all that, but yet you're not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You have never known truth a certain way. It is possible for people to walk around life and they you look at them and you assume that they know truth. But we, you, it, you can live this life and die. I'll tell you that because I can go back to my own personal life and bear witness with you that when I'd first um, gotten born again, no, no, when I started ministry, right? 
back in the days of campus, we used to, you know, cast out devils, do all these kinds of things, heal the sick, rebuke, uh, and all these kinds of things. And we, we used to see results, what you call results. If you wanted results, we had them, right? And if somebody looked at us, they would think, oh, no, these are just young men in process. Someday something will happen through. They just need a step by step. And it looks like so because you start to appear like someone progressing. And yes, it's true. To a certain level, there is progress on your life because of the ounce of truth that is placed in your spirit. But there was a day the light went on. It's an experience. There's a day when finally your eyes open. You know, you can live all your life with a sort of blindness, a kind of blindness, and never know that you have it. Until one day you wake up and this, you know, when the Bible says your eyes are washed with self, right? The eyes, God just cleanses your eyes. Eh? And then you finally realize that the things you thought you saw and understood were not so. And then you start to walk around life and start to look at people and see how much lack of knowledge is in those who even assume to know. He says, desiring to be teachers of the law, they know not what they say, neither from whence they are from. And sometimes you cannot go to this guy and tell him, no, you don't know. Sometimes all you can do is believe God and continue doing your stuff and preaching the gospel. When you're big enough, they'll ask questions. Are you hearing me? When you can appeal enough to their senses, they'll ask questions. When you have enough results that are evident. You remember when men come to Jesus at night? They said, for we know that you're what? You're a man, a teacher sent from God. For nobody can do these things except God be with you. Now, for some, they, they can only understand that way. But they, they creep in at night. The, those kinds don't come during day. During the day, yeah, 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 there's a certain wonderful guy. Yeah, he's a good preacher. Then at night, <laughs> praise God. They, they, and, and, and beware of them that come at night. Beware of them that come at night. You understand? Because with them is a sort of pride. There are people who don't come, cannot come to this meeting. No. But they, they listen. They, I find some pastors, the guy says, ah, yeah, 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 I live stream you. I go, even you, yeah, 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 even watch last Thursday. What? Yeah. So how is ministry? Praise God. But then you can enter in public and the guy looks at you like this. But he enjoys your stuff. He chews it like weed. <laughs> he hides himself and consumes it like a drug. You understand? <laughs> Those ones come by the night. But for me, I don't mind it because they come anyway. That's important. They what? <laughs> they can't sit here. No, but they come in their own way. They sit on urban on Sunday morning. <laughs> Many pastors I find. And the guy says, Eh, hey, name Sajja Gwenkulaba ku Abani. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Name Samachi. What is the secret? <laughs> Praise God. I say, oh, yes, I'm, you know, I humble myself and I move on. But I know what they're trying to say. Those ones come by the night. So you understand what it means, come by the night. The people that consume you without knowing, and they don't even want you to know that they consume you. They read the devotion of in secret, and then they get someone so Sunday. Hallelujah. Then you say, hey, we don't understand that guy. <laughs> but during night, they what? They understand you. So, back to the point. So, we, we are campus, we're reading the word. Of course, miracles are there, gifts are there, the anointing is there. There are things that are evident that, you know, so you're going somewhere. And then we have a group of guys who are also doing the same thing. They are casting out devils, cleansing lepers, rebuking things. If you looked at us in a group like this, you'd say, these boys are going somewhere. Right? But over the years, I started to notice these guys, some of our people, our peers, they never moved on. So I was very disturbed. I was broken in my heart. I was asking, God, these are guys we saw you with. What, what did they miss? What did they see? And he told me it's very simple. They never came to the knowledge of the truth. They were never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Is it so that there are people who just don't have the ability to come to the knowledge of the truth? Then how will he have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth? That means everybody is able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Right? But you see, certain people set themselves against that light. They set, you know, it's very possible to set yourself against the knowledge of the truth, but then have a consequent, a, 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 a perpetual experience of ever learning, but when you're set against the truth. It's very possible to set yourself against the truth, right? Yeah, to rebel against the light. And the Bible says, they know not the ways thereof, nor abide in the paths thereof. They know not the ways thereof, neither abide in the paths thereof, because they rebel against the light. And you can still sit in the church and you're ever learning. But your soul, your, your soul has rebelled against light. You will learn many things. You will write many things. You can even repeat the same sermons that they are preaching. But you will never walk in the truth. You will never have a progression of that ability to walk in the truth. Because you're not able. You're not able. You're not able. He says they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That it's, it's not a passive place of saying, I want to, but I'm not able. No. It is just something certain people set themselves against. And the only thing that holds us back to that place is the spirit of rebellion. You know, rebellion is a very interesting thing because it does not come in the things many people know. And let me open your eyes to this light so you understand what I mean to say. Hmm? When you read the Word of God, a simple statement of scripture and it says for example forgive just simple statement do what forgive 70 times seven times this is scripture are you hearing me and then a situation comes through and then a brother a sister or somebody hurts your family member and then you're not a worldly person that they need to tell you to forgive. You know that the word tells you to what? Forgive. Then your heart refuses to release them. Hmm? Your heart refuses to release them. Your heart refuses to forgive them. Right? That is not ignorance you know that forgiveness is the life of a believer then somebody says you know what i'm trying but i failed to forgive but the word again will hold you and say but the bible says that you are embedded with the love of god through the holy spirit the love of god has been shed abroad in our hearts through the holy spirit isn't it? So if the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart through the Holy Spirit, how come you are saying I'm struggling to forgive? It's a knowledge. You actually don't know that the, the love of God is so much in you that you cannot help not you cannot help to forgive. Right? The right understanding is that the love of God that is in your heart constrains you to forgive. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That means when you say you have the Holy Spirit and you open your mouth and you're speaking in tongues, right? It only means that you, you, the love of God is in you enough to forgive. And then you say, but I am not able to try to forgive, but I can't. Are you hearing me? When you say I can't, you're, you're rebelling against the truth. Because the truth says you are able the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And this love constrains you. God is love. You cannot say that you're born again and you've not forgiven. And then somebody says, I am trying, Apostle, to forgive my father, but I have failed. You have not failed. You either just don't know or you know that you have rebelled in your heart against the truth. 
that is in you that says it is impossible for a new creation not to be able to forgive. That's rebelling against the truth. When you do that, you start setting yourself on the course of the ever learning but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because in your heart you rebel against it. And just that one act of unforgiveness can hold back the spirit of truth in many ways. Just one act can hold back the spirit of truth in many ways. That means he's not able to come through you. He's not able to teach you. He's not able to show you. He's not able to love you. He's not able to reveal himself to you. Why? Because you've rebelled yourself against the light. You don't walk in the ways of light. You cannot abide in the ways of light. You don't know the ways of light. You don't understand his heart and ministry and deliberation towards your life. Why? Because you have simply refused to forgive. Yet you know the Bible says, forgive 70 times 7. Why should you be dealing with unforgiveness at this level? Are you following what I'm saying? There is somebody who, for example, is like this. Hmm? There is somebody who is saying, my heart has forgiven, right? I have let go, I have released this individual, I know the love of God abides in me by the Holy Spirit, so I cannot help but to forgive. Um, I know that this love constrains me not to harm, or on the other hand also it constrains me to believe in the best for them and everything. But in there, I'm still struggling with the pain thereof. If you're that kind of person, it is okay. Because sometimes, you know, you can struggle with the pain and the wound. The scar can stay and need time to heal. But that does not necessarily mean that you've not forgiven. In fact, the literal definition of the word forgiveness is to take out of sight. You know what it means? It means it is never the thing that is before you. It is always the thing that is behind you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whatever issue it is, you set it behind you, you don't set it in front of you. If you set it in front of you, you will attend to it, you will speak about it, you will complain about it, you will accuse the person about it, you will speak evil about it. But if it is behind you, you cover. You understand what I'm saying? If it is behind you, you never discuss it. If it is behind you, you never think it. If it crosses your eyes, you say, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou severest not the things of God, but the things of man. And boom, see it go in the back. And fix your eyes on things above. Put your eyes on things ahead. Paul says, this one thing I attest to my spirit, that I look on the things what? Ahead. On the things forward. On the things to come, not on the things in the back. That is a man who has learned not to rebel against truth. And when you do that, you open yourself for the grace to know him. To know him. And this area works in many different ways. It's, it's in your giving. It's in your service. It's in your service and accountability. It's in your marriage. It's in your children. It's in your workplace. It's in your, in your affairs of your life. It is in the small things that God has appealed to you to simply obey because you know at least that part of it. When the Bible speaks of that strength and that which remaineth, in every believer there is a part of them that is conscious of truth. That thing that was placed in you at a particular point that not only makes you a human being all separate from animals, but makes you conscious of certain realities that are beyond any man can teach you, but you are sure in your heart that these same things define so much of who you are. I've spoken about unforgiveness, but there are many other areas in which we struggle, and sometimes we, right? And that is why I tell people, if for example you're dealing with forgiveness, and for example you are struggling, or any area, finances or anything, or any area of your life, and you know that's a struggle. I have learned this over the years. Get into the Word and start to read about that particular thing. 
get in there and start to get to know more about it get to yield yourself to understanding it you'll be so amazed at how God will deal with it why because that's the power of the word when you receive it it walks and works in you it's probably you're struggling with a full knowledge and understanding of what it means all right it's like for me many years ago many many years ago many years ago many 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 years ago I saw a vision in God and from that day I have never struggled to forgive it does not matter what any man can do to me he revealed to me how much he loves me that's all the love of God <laughs> you understand it, it looks like a small thing but when you understand that love the way he loves the way he loves not you because you you can compare yourself with some other people and feel that some people are worse no i'm talking about the way he loves mankind i used to go to hospitals uh and i and most of my until all my internships i loved to go to hospitals because i always had a soft thing for the sick and i remember the first time i worked in hospice the next time i worked at another hospital somewhere and so i used to do a lot of things there right and you get to someone and just the way they smell huh? because of disease just the scent the stench that is coming off that human body right you can't come next to them you can't come next to them you're following what i'm saying and then jesus tells you but you know what i love that person so much that if i was there <laughs> you understand where i'm coming from this is the flesh talking that i cannot come to such a stage right but then the spirit of the lord tells you, you know what i died for that person too they have value and i love them immensely if i was in the flesh there is nothing i would not do for them now you don't even know what got them there there's probably you know, somebody there's a story saying aha that guy deserves it do you know how many people he did this to do you know how many? but you see even there the love of god was still present on that sick fellow you could see it he might not see it he might look at himself in the form of judgment i have realized that even the men who have aligned themselves eh, to judgment and they are at the point of destruction the lord still looks and weeps because he does not need no he does not want any to perish god does not want any man to perish it doesn't matter how wicked they are he does not want any man to perish it doesn't matter how bad that woman is god does not want any man to perish any man it doesn't matter how bad they are he doesn't want any man so when you have that understanding you find yourself loving men you just find yourself doing it just do it because you see the love of god toward you yes but also toward mankind and how he deals with men are you hearing me and then you start entering the love walk you start living the love life you start responding to love a certain way people ask themselves how come this fellow has never said anything against me that's just who he is he's obedient to the light are you hearing what i'm saying and those things open the spirit of revelation on your life you some of you think that revelation is something that hits you on a mountain when you say no it is something that comes to the heart that is broken to do truth in spite of the pain that it comes with are you hearing what i'm saying you think there are no times we were broke and then god says give me my tithes anyway <laughs> give, give give anyway do you know how hard it is to obey truth when everything has set itself against you but it is in those things that a man says you know what i am willing god i am softening myself to your word and truth every time you become obedient are you hearing me in the small things you open up yourself to the knowledge of truth every time you rebel in the smaller things yeah 
you start to, it's like recently I saw a Christian, a, a certain Christian abusing another Christian. And I said, how can your mouth say those words? How can you, how is your mouth able to say such words? Then this person switches on the, 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 the debate and says, but he, we are not talking about what they have done here. We are, and, and that's why I say some people are not able to understand. Have you ever been around people? That's why sometimes some people are just not able to understand. Even if you explain to them, they're just not able. And I'm telling you, no, 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 he's here. We're not talking about what they have done to you, what this individual has done to you. We're talking about you here. That somebody can snap you and it changes who you are. You understand what I'm saying? That means that evil has consumed you. And if the evil of a man has consumed you in the time when God has given you grace and wisdom to discern judgment, when calamity comes, then you're worse than that man. Because he's only done that to you because he does not know better. And you've responded to him because you know worse than he knows. Less than he knows. Are you hearing me? So, I want to get into this individual and tell him, now, the point is not what they did to you. The point is that your heart has set itself. You know what to do. Your speech should always be with grace. But you have chosen to speak a certain way. If this person has told me, oh, it just hit me, I'm sorry. That's a man still saying, God, your law is in my heart. I have made a mistake and I understand it. Right? That man is still open to the knowledge of truth. But this one says, but she, but he. That means we are not even at the point where you want to know what truth says. You, it's regardless of what truth is. Or that the truth in you can be tipped to a level where it goes out and you become carnal and walk in the flesh. That is rebelling against the truth. Even if it is me as your pastor, I should not set you against truth. I shouldn't. Or if I have, then you have the right to rebel against me. Because I'm setting you against truth. I'm not supposed to be setting men against truth. We are not supposed to be set against truth. Why? Because every time you do that, you frustrate revelation. And every time you frustrate revelation, you kill the voice of God on your life. And when you kill the voice of God in your life, things around you will start to die. And you will not have the control of those things. There are, sometimes my pity goes to people who are ever learning, but they are not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's like there are many pastors we deal with sometimes and you're preaching grace, present truth, but they are not able. And 99.99% who fight, when you ask him, have you really ever listened? He says, I've never listened. He asks, but if you have never listened, why are you fighting the message you have never listened to? Yet the Bible is clear. Truth has told you that you don't judge a man until you listen to him. The Bible says that the first and second admonition of a man regarding my heretic. This is truth. You teach it, Pastor, on your Sunday service. You preach it every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday. But if you preach it and at the end of the day you have heard, oh, there's this heretic fellow, and then you set yourself against the course of the truth you preach, that is a person who has rebelled against the light. And when you rebel against the light, you kill the place to know his ways and to abide in his path. You cannot walk in the truth. You will not progress. Why? Because you have rebelled against the light. You know it is light. Are you hearing me? But there's also someone who doesn't know that it is what? It's light. And then we give him light and say, no, in this instance, we forgive. But many of those, those who do that are very few because those are babes. When a babe you know, spoil themselves, you don't beat them. You just wash them. Are you hearing me? When you wash them, you wait because there's a point they'll mature and know, you know what? This is where number two goes. This is where number one goes. 
You understand? But before they get there, we are patient with them because they are babies. But you cannot be 10, 3 years, 5 years, 6 years in the gospel and you're still a babe. That is setting yourself against. If you spoil yourself and yet you are all these years in the gospel, what have you learned? So this is not a place of examining your neighbor. This is a place of examining yourself whether you be in the faith. Are you just learning? Or have you come to the knowledge of the truth? You have not come to the knowledge of the truth because you're able to teach it and preach it. You have come to the knowledge of the truth because it is working in you. Speak to God. learning and learning but without the progress of the things that I hear and if there are parts in me that hold you back to speak to me then reveal those things to me talk to me about those things bend me and break me because you know I love you you know I want to serve you you know I want to live for you you know I want to be what you have ordained me to be you know that I cherish your word. You know that my heart needs to explore your goodness and understand you because that is the purpose for which you sent me on this earth. You did not send me to be an average person. You sent me for greatness. And so if there's faith in me that you know rebel against the truth, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. In Jesus' name, Lord, Amen. Praise God. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 